Hey, Facilitator. Meg Bolger here from Facilitator Cards. If you missed our main brain jam, where we explored StreamJack and how we can use it to help us enhance our virtual facilitation practice, you have come to the right place. I am going to give you a quick overview of Stream Deck, show you a little bit about what we're going to build, and then we're going to build your first profile in Stream Deck and teach you how to set it up so that you can manipulate everything that you want um, in Zoom or any other profile that you, or any other platform that you are using. So let's go ahead and get into it. So popped over here to our Zoom. And the first thing that I wanna show you is that you can use Stream Deck which is what I'm using right now, to open your chat window in Zoom, to open your participants panel in Zoom. And I find that really handy when you are facilitating. There's so much to manage and I often just lose track of those buttons, especially if I am screen sharing. Those buttons go into the, that kind of mysterious more uh, three dot drop down. So having one single button that I can use to toggle those is really, really helpful. Here's the thing that was universally agreed upon in the Brain Jam as kind of the game changer when it comes to using Stream Deck over just, you know, not using anything in addition to what you're used to of keyboards and mice and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to pop over here to my Zoom. I am going to open up the chat and I'm going to go ahead and click one button in Stream Deck. And my Stream Deck is going to send a message. And then in about a couple of seconds, you'll see it actually send a couple of a couple more messages. Yeah. So all of that was sent with the click of a single button. And it's something that I pre-programmed ahead of time so that when I'm in the moment, when I'm facilitating, I don't have to be copying and pasting. I don't have to be typing things out in the chat. I can just be totally focused on my participants, on what I'm saying, and I can know that what I want to send in the chat is happening. So that's really useful and for me has been a complete game changer when it comes to um, virtual facilitation and one of the things that has me so excited about the Stream Deck. There's a lot more that you can do with Stream Deck. Anything that you can use keyboard shortcuts so anytime you, you know, use your arrow keys to control Google Slides, or if you are, if you have a short key to um, mute yourself or mute all of your participants, all of those things you can now, rather than having to remember, is it like Alt Shift P or is it Alt Alt? Is it just Alt P to to um, to mute my participants? You don't have to remember those things anymore. You can just program them in to Stream Deck. Uh, and then just have a button that tells you, yep, this is what, this is the uh, mute all participants button, or yep, this is the button that will open your chat window. So I think that's really exciting. And I think that is uh, more than enough of a demo to get us started. So let's jump in to um, using Stream Deck and building your first profile in Stream Deck. So one thing you will need to do before you start building is you will need to download a, you, you need to download Stream Deck to your computer, the software, um, and I'll leave links below for that. And you'll also need to download S Stream Deck to your phone if you don't have a Stream Deck like hardware device, right? So um, Stream Deck is both a physical device and they offer a mobile um, Stream Deck mobile version, which you can download the app. The app is free for 30 days, so you can totally try this out without paying for it. And then there's a subscription fee that's, I think, $3.99 a month at the time I'm recording this. So if you don't have a Stream Deck already and you haven't downloaded that software, I will leave links below on how to do that. And um, it takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes to get that set up get them synced together and speaking together, your Stream Deck and your, um, so the Stream Deck on your phone or mobile or and the Stream Deck on your computer. Um, pretty easy setup and I'll leave some guidance for that. Once you have that, come on back here and we'll start building. So let's say we are ready to go. We are ready to start building in our Stream Deck. Then we're gonna hop over here and I will um, during this build process, I'm going to start with a completely blank slate and a completely blank stream deck. So what you're seeing um, in the big 
uh, side of the window. That's what you're going to see on your computer. And down here, right below my video, that is what you're going to, that's where my stream deck is. And so that's what's going to actually activate things. Um, we build on our computer and we make it happen by clicking it on our stream deck mobile or on our physical device. So let's start by making it really easy for ourselves to build. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to come up here to this drop down menu and I'm going to unselect most of the things in this drop down menu just to make it super simple. So we're going to start with just Stream Deck and System. That's all we're going to manipulate for now. If you use OBS, there's a ton of cool controls for OBS. There's lots of things for folks who live stream to Twitter or YouTube or Twitch. Um, and there's some more advanced stuff we can get into at the end. But for now, all we need is Stream Deck and System. So we're going to hit Done. We're going to open up those drop down menus. And now we have a bunch of different um, types of buttons that we can set up. So the first button that we're going to set up is we're going to set up a button to make it easy for us to open our Stream Deck application. And we're going to do that with this um, button right here. And that is the system button uh, for open. So I'm going to drag that into a key. I'm going to title it Stream Deck. If you want it to be on separate lines, just make sure you, uh, you make that happen with, a, with an enter. And then I am going to choose um, on a Mac, this will open your applications folder, and you're going to go ahead and down and find a, a Stream Deck in your applications folder. Works very similarly on PC. And then I'm gonna hit open. And it brought in the cool little icon and we have Stream Deck. So now when I touch that button on my Stream Deck, even if I have something else selected, like if I had my Zoom window open, um, when I touch that button, it's going to bring Stream Deck to the foreground. So we know that it's working. So you can give that a test right now and see if that's working. And uh, let's now build the Zoom button. So, um, you can open up a blank Zoom or any other meeting just to see if the um, buttons that we are creating are working. Um, that's what I would recommend. If you don't use Zoom and you want to you know, make this work in Microsoft Teams, um, it'll be a very similar process and you can just test it out there. So I'm going to keep going with Zoom. I'm going to, again, drag this open and I'm going to title it Zoom and I'm going to find Zoom in my applications folder. OK, apparently it's buried. There it is. OK, so now we have Zoom and we have Stream Deck. So one thing that I can do now is I can switch between them, right? I can pull up Stream Deck and I can pull up Zoom. And you're seeing whatever is on top, right? Um, that's what those buttons allow me to do. They allow me to bring that application to the foreground. And that's gonna be really important when we start wanting to manipulate things in Zoom is making sure that's the application that is in the foreground or that our computer knows that we're interacting in, right? So um, let's do a couple of cool things that we can make happen in Zoom. So what we're gonna be doing next is we're gonna be using keyboard shortcuts to make that chat window pop up and the participants panel pop up. And Zoom has a ton of keyboard shortcuts, um, but I've never used them even after a year of facilitating online. And that's because they're hard to remember. When I'm facilitating in the moment, I don't wanna have to remember that it's you know three different keys in order to open the chat window. So I've never bothered memorizing them. But now because of Stream Deck, I don't have to memorize them. I just need to know what they are so that I can program them into my Stream Deck. So this is how we're going to find out that list of keyboard shortcuts. Um, we're going to come into Zoom and we are going to, um, we are going to open up our video settings. And when you open your video settings, down here at the bottom, we've got keyboard shortcuts. This is going to, I'm on a Mac, so you're seeing the Mac 
default keyboard shortcuts. For PC, they're going to look a little different, not only different, but they are going to be also a little more clear because PC does everything out in long form text. So for PC, it will say like Alt Shift P. For Macs, you have this uh, these symbols and if you don't know how to read them it can feel a little bit like hieroglyphics So let me give you a quick tip on that if you don't know that this symbol is the option symbol What you can do is if you click on it and hover you'll see right there It says option Y and so now you can know okay That's how I can do that if I wanted to program raise lower hand Option Y that's the keyboard shortcut I need so keep that open for reference. You can also find this online if you're having trouble accessing it in Zoom. You just Google Zoom keyboard shortcuts. That'll work perfectly. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can, um, if, you're, if you're facilitating in Teams or facilitating in Google Meet, then you can also look up keyboard shortcuts for those and just program those keyboard shortcuts instead of the Zoom one. So I've got that open. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to program that chat panel opening and closing. So that's for me in here, it's show hide in meeting chat panel. And again, I'm going to click it, shift command H. So that's what it is on my computer. And again, I think these are the default ones for Mac. And uh, for PC, it's going to be a little different. So make sure you look at your list. Enable global shortcut. We had a question about this um, when I was showing people this walkthrough before. That just means that no matter where you are, what program is open, if you say, yes, please enable this global shortcut, even if I was working in Chrome or in, um, in Stream Deck, then this would work. Um, for me, I get a little bit hesitant to use global shortcuts because I don't want them to mess up other programs that have keyboard shortcuts. Um, when there are you know, three different commands, that's probably a little less likely, but there, you know, command, um, command P is a shortcut for print when I'm using a Google Doc, and I like that shortcut, but if I enabled the global shortcut, then um, that could interfere with that. So I, I tend to leave those off. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pull this aside back to our stream deck. So keyboard shortcuts in Stream Deck, they're called hotkeys. So in order to create a, uh, to be able to toggle our chat, we're gonna go ahead and drag in hotkey. And I'm gonna label this chat. And now below here, we have this option to assign, click to assign. And so when I do that, you'll see it says observing keystrokes. That means like I'm watching what your keyboard is about to do and I'm gonna input them here. So again, for me, the show hide in chat panel shortcut was shift command H. And so I just press that on my keyboard and now we have that um, shortcut queued up in Stream Deck. So we're gonna do another hot key. This time we're gonna call it participants panel and I'll find what that is in my zoom for me that's command P and now we have our participants panel button and let's do one more let's do um, mute audio for everyone except the host maybe you have a bunch of unruly participants one day and um, you just need to like cut cut the silence or you, no one can figure out which background, who's got the loud uh, screeching background. And so you just want to mute everybody's audio. So we'll go in again, hotkey, mute all. And for me, that is control command M. Control command M. <laughs> all right, cool. So we've got our three keyboard shortcuts programmed up. Let's see if they worked. So we're over here in Zoom and I'm going to go ahead and test them out. So I'm going to press the chat. Okay, that worked. I'm going to press the participants. Awesome. And we're going to have to trust <laughs> that the mute all worked because right now I'm in a Zoom alone, um, which is the saddest of the Zooms. And uh, uh, the first two worked. So I think we're, um, we're on a pretty good roll there. So now that we have those programmed, let's figure out how to send text 
into the chat because that's where, to me, the real power of Stream Decks comes is being able to take things that we were doing, we were having to like fiddle around with, you know, copying from my notes and pasting it over into the chat. Like that's where the real power comes from. So instead of doing that, let's figure out how to do it ahead of time. So I'm going to pull in um, from this list of system, I'm going to pull in text. So I'm going to write celebration. Or I'm just going to write yay. And I'm going to title that yay. And then I'm going to write, I did it. It worked. And that's the text it's going to send. This is the title for the button. And I'm going to hit enter after that message so that as soon as the, it's done typing that text, it's going to send it automatically. So we've got our yay button. Let's see if it worked. And um, OK, we're over here in Zoom. So we're going to make sure that our Zoom is on top. We're going to open the chat. And now we're going to hit our yay button. And it worked. So hopefully, if you're following along and you're testing at home, it also worked for you. Um, this is a good time to pause and say that if it didn't work for you, if the, the keyboard shortcuts nor, the, um, nor this worked for you, then there may be a reason and, or there is a reason, and I might know the answer. So the thing that you might need to do is enable permissions for Stream Deck to use what is called input monitoring on your Mac. So let me show you how to, to make that happen um, briefly. So if, if it's not showing up, um, the keyboard shortcuts aren't working and the um, and the text isn't working, then it is likely a permissions issue. And so what you need to do, first thing, you need to unlock your security and privacy. So you need to go in here and unlock your security and privacy. And once that's unlocked, you need to come down here to input monitoring. And this is basically giving your computer, you're, you're telling your computer, it is okay if Stream Deck has access to essentially my keyboard or to making, doing an impersonation, I guess, of your keyboard, um, doing the same commands that your keyboard does for your computer. So if you don't see Stream Deck in this list, once you've unlocked it, you can hit the plus button and you can go ahead and add it from your list of, um, your list of applications. So if you hit open, it'll add. I already have mine in here. So that's the, um, the most likely trouble as Mac users that you're gonna run into is if it's not working right away, it's probably a security and privacy problem. Um, but once you have it, um, once it has access to your input monitoring, you can go ahead and lock that back up and give it a test now and it should be good to go. So, okay, we have a chat button. We have learned how to program all those keyboard shortcuts, and now we have text. So a couple of fun things I'm gonna show you, or just I think really useful um, little things that I use Stream Deck for when I'm facilitating. Um, something that I will often want when I'm facilitating is a timer. Usually I go to set that on my phone, but sometimes I don't, I don't wanna use my phone, I don't wanna get distracted, um, or I just forget, I forget to like reference it. So there is a timer built into Stream Deck. So you can go ahead and drag over right here, timer, also, let's get rid of this welcome button. We can just go ahead and hit delete on that. So we've got our timer here. And this timer only works in seconds. So you do have to do a little bit of math um, often if you want to use it. So I like to have a timer for my entire workshop so that I can see that counting down and, and have a reference point for how much time we have left. So if I'm doing a 90 minute workshop, then that is going to be 5,000. 400 seconds, fact I did not know until this moment, and we've got 90 minutes. Okay, so that's that's great. And then I also like, um, I often do little sections in five minute um, increments. Oh, and something I just did really quick, so let me show you. You can copy and paste any button. So 
if you wanted to, if, if there was something that you liked about the button that you just created, whether it was the fancy image or you just wanted another one of those buttons, you can um, quick, uh, you can copy and then paste into them. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this into the five minute timer and uh, five times 60 is 300 seconds. So now we have that and I can customize these sounds if I would like to as well. So when I hit, um, when I hit the button, the stream deck, you'll see right here in the small little window that it starts a five minute timer. And it just starts that right in Stream Deck. And when I'm using Stream Deck to facilitate, that's a really easy thing to reference. Again, you're never when you're facilitating, you're not going to see this window um, because that's going to all be set up ahead of time. All you're going to be doing is looking and interfacing with the actual Stream Deck. So you can go ahead and hit it and it will start. And if you hit it again, it will stop. So we've also got a 90 minute timer and uh, you can see it's got one hour and 23 or 20, 23, 29 minutes and it's counting down. So uh, that's something that I really like to use, a little kind of fun feature in Stream Deck. There's also a multimedia button. So let's say you have Spotify open because you're playing some tunes for folks. Let's go ahead and do that. We'll add Spotify. Okay, so let's say we're running Spotify and we want to control Spotify from our multimedia, um, sorry, from our Stream Deck. We're going to use this multimedia feature and um, they have a bunch of them already built into Stream Deck. So I mostly just want to play and pause um, when I'm in a facilitation and maybe I'll also want to um, in to decrease the volume. So that will allow me to increase or decrease the volume um, any music that I'm playing on my computer, whether that's in Spotify or anywhere else. Um, it will decrease the volume in uh, of my computer um, if, if I want to do that. So last thing I want to show you for this walkthrough before you just head off and uh, play around and learn things for yourself is... Um, we are going to learn how to do multiple actions in a row. So if you remember when I first showed the Zoom meeting, we had this multiple, um, uh, multiple messages sent with one press of a button. So let's learn how to do that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a folder. And the folder isn't necessary, but I find folders really, useful when I'm setting up Stream Deck um, because oftentimes in a workshop, I have more than one message I wanna send um, my participants. So let's create a folder called Messages. And we can even copy and paste from um, before. So let's say I actually moved my, my yay message over here. And now we're going to make a multiple line message. So we're gonna use the multi-action button to do that. So when we click and drop the multi-action over on our Stream Deck, it's going to bring us to this new interface. And this, um, this interface is gonna say, okay, you can do any of these things now in a row. We will do them one after the other after the other. So perhaps what we want is we want it to send two pieces of text. We want it to wait five seconds and then send two more. Um, or send one more piece of text. So let's do that. We are going to drop in the text. I'm just gonna label this first message. And we've got, this is, okay. Uh, maybe I want to send another message and that message is a link. So I'm going to say this is the link to my website. Okay, I want now those two things to sit in the chat for five, 10 seconds um, while I talk about them before the next message sends. So let's go ahead and assume a 10 second delay. <laughs> this is in milliseconds, so you do have to do a little more math here, but um, it's handy in case you want very short delays that it's in that time frame. And 
then we're going to send one more, one more piece of text. And this is going to be final message is coming through. Okay. So one thing you want to make sure of is that you have pressed enter after each message, that that is checked off after each one. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I did that. Okay. And this multi action, let's title this um, final links, right? Maybe, maybe it's the links to our um, feedback forms, or it's a thank you message, whatever, whatever it is, um, we can send multiple things. So let's go ahead and test that out. So back over to our zoom view. Okay, we're in our zoom view, we're going to open our folder. And we have our chat open already. And we're going to hit the button and see if it worked. Okay, it's typed our first two <laughs> links. And you can see there's a little progress bar here telling us like, I'm not done with this um, multi action yet, it hasn't fully completed. And there it goes, there's our last, um, there's our last message. So multi action worked, we've got it. Um, that's really awesome. Something just like a little tip that I will I'll leave you is um, I like to have the chat both on kind of like my main screen um, that I'm using during my zoom meeting. I also like to have it in the messages folder um, that uh, that way I can if the chat isn't open, I can always press it when I go into that folder, right? Because um, otherwise, the message won't send. If you don't have that chat window open and you press the text, the text has no idea where to go. Um, and it will go wherever you have it open on your computer. So um, yeah, just make sure that the chat window is open before you press the button. Okay. All right. So let's do a quick review. This is how you set up your stream deck. We went over a lot of features for um, Zoom facilitation, but again, if you use any other platform, all you have to know is what keyboard shortcuts um, does that platform use, and then you can set up those keyboard shortcuts in Stream Deck. You can use Stream Deck to open your different um, applications easily. You can use it to go um, to send messages and multiple messages as a timer, and there are way more things that we can get into with Stream Deck. Um, there's tons of possibilities and there's a lot of things that have been built out for this system. So if you want to explore those, I would encourage you to get into this more actions button. And when you press that, you're going to see all of these kind of add-ons and plugins that people have installed or created for Stream Deck. And if you are somebody who uses PowerPoint, there is one built in for PowerPoint. Um, so that's really handy. If you use PowerPoint, they have all of the forward back, um, next slide, press play on this presentation buttons already built in. Um, that's a pretty cool one. There is a ton of things on here. There is one built in for Spotify and anything that is made by Elgato, you're going to know that that is likely to work incredibly well because Elgato is the creators of Stream Deck, right? So it's a pretty, pretty official extension. And there is um, my favorites from this list. If you are curious, I'll go ahead and show you. There's a couple of custom ones that I like. Um, one of my favorites is this analog clock, which just shows you the time of day. Um, you can customize it a little bit. Um, yeah, I like it really clean um, without any colors or without any text and you can make sure to set it to your location. Um, so that's really neat. Um, there's also something that you could do, which is kind of like a when you know when people walk in the door um, and you're just clicking a click, click, this is how many people have walked in. Um, we don't need to do that as much for, for um, virtual facilitation because Zoom counts it all ourselves, but there is a counter button, which every time you press it, it's just gonna count up for you. So there's neat little things like that that you can explore and get into. Um, I love Stream Deck for virtual facilitation. I also use it just for my everyday um, working around my computer, whether that's opening Slack, uh, creating a new um, 
uh, a new calendar, um, opening my Spotify or getting into um, common links that I send people. If I find myself sending a link over and over again and constantly searching for what that link is, I will put it in my links folder and then I have a, um, a quick way to access that. And if you have a bunch of different um, facilitations that you regularly do where you're like, you know, on Mondays I facilitate our all hands meeting and I generally want these kinds of controls. And on Tuesdays I do my team meeting and I want these kinds of controls. And Friday, you know, I do a live stream to YouTube and I want these types of controls. You can set up completely separate profiles for all of those things um, right in your stream deck. Uh, and you can hop into those profiles and everything, um, everything will be there. So this is the one I use to facilitate our brain jam. And uh, this is the one that we all just built together. So hope you learned a lot from this uh, walkthrough. I hope that I'll get to catch you in a future brain jam. Please leave any questions that you have about facilitating in Stream Deck below in the comments. I would love to hear your questions. I would love to hear even more your ideas of how you're using it. I'd love you to, to share your creative use cases and um, things that you figured out about it. Would so love to, to know how you're using it. So hope you appreciated and enjoyed this walkthrough and I hope to catch you in the future. Happy facilitating.